The Polaris-class corvette is an upcoming capital ship in Star Citizen, as a mobile combat platform. The potential for a relatively simple ship with a powerful armament, as well as a full suite of useful amenities is highly appealing to many players. I'm Farrister, and welcome to the Dry Dock, a new series which will delve deeper into the ships of Star Citizen. This video will explore the background behind the Polaris both in and out of game, then take a look at some of the attributes and statistics of the ship, before considering how that might all translate into gameplay. There are timestamps in the video description, although if you're a fan of the Polaris, you might prefer to watch this one all the way through. And whilst this channel usually focuses on what's currently in-game, necessarily this video will navigate the treacherous space that is speculation territory. Whilst every effort has been made to approach this video accurately, sometimes information is sparse and much is subject to change as time goes along, so please treat the content with a pinch of salt and not as a definitive promise as to what will happen. All of that said, let's dive into the background of the Polaris. Announced in October 2016, the Polaris was the successor to the Idris, filling the gap left in the Corvette-sized ship space. The launch documents refer to a combination of naval patrol ship and flagship for militia-type operations. There has been a little bit of information drip-fed over time since then, with the Polaris expected to enter the next stage of development in 2023 or 2024 as the first Robert Space Industries capital ship, and is expected to take a year or two of work afterwards to complete. In game lore, the Polaris was developed in response to the attack on Vega in 2945, potentially as part of the Squadron 42 campaign. Following the attack, the UEE Navy sought proposals for a relatively quick, combat-capable ship, a little smaller than the Idris, capable of being on scene quickly to deal with incursions. The Polaris, developed by RSI, was selected due to meeting those requirements, with a variety of useful facilities aboard, as well as a complementary role within a fleet as a picket ship. To help fund the launch, as well as diversify responsibility for protecting disparate star systems, the Militia Mobile Initiative permitted civilians to also purchase the Corvettes, with a proportion of funding from those sales allocated to mobilisation and relief efforts across the UEE. That makes the Polaris a relatively modern capital ship, contrasting greatly to the Idris and Javelin, both of which are comparatively old. The RSI label also differentiates the Polaris from the other UEE Navy capital ships. As you might expect, Astro Historian has a fantastic, detailed video all about the story in his video RSI Polaris Power Personalised, which I'd highly recommend for those interested. On launch in 2016, the Polaris was offered for sale for $750, or for $625 of new money. Most recently, that war bond price increased to $675, but the Polaris has only been available in time-limited sales sporadically since launch. In addition, the Polaris has also been available in various, more expensive ship packs. The stated purpose for the Polaris is as a naval patrol ship and flagship for militia operations. In practice, as a corvette, it's likely that the Polaris will end up filling slightly different roles depending on the size of the threat and the Allied force. Within a standalone role, the Polaris seems to be best tailored to quickly deal with medium-sized targets, whilst denying the area to fighter-sized craft. That seems to make it well-placed to be a rapid-response, anti-piracy, patrol and peacekeeping ship. But additionally, the Polaris might operate as part of a wider fleet, as a combination of screening ship, but also potent threat with the relatively heavy torpedo armament. Based on current information, the Polaris would have a total length of 155 metres, a total width or beam of 82 metres, and a total height or depth of 35 metres. For context, that's a similar length to the Reclaimer currently in-game, but in a more slim and compact form factor. The Polaris is set to have a total mass 
of 17,155 metric tonnes. As a capital ship, the Polaris is expected to house a considerable number of components. The specifications list a capital class radar as well as two medium sized computers. The power plant for the Polaris is set to be a single capital sized plant and cooling would be provided by two large coolers with defensive shields covered by two large shield generators. As a quick reaction ship, the Polaris looks set to include a large quantum fuel tank and two medium hydrogen fuel tanks. Both the quantum drive and jump drive look to be large. In addition, the technical overview lists three large fuel intakes to help feed the fuel requirements for the ship. In terms of propulsion, the specifications list four main thrusters and two retro thrusters. Rotation and translation support will be provided by 12 fixed manoeuvring thrusters located around the ship. The primary armament on the Polaris is set to be four massive size 10 torpedo launchers, with a total torpedo stockpile of 28 weapons. Primarily, these weapons seem intended to engage capital sized ships and are larger than the size 9 armament found on the Eclipse and Retaliator but smaller than the size 12 set to feature on the Javelin. But as a patrol ship, the Polaris naturally needs additional armament to deal with other threats. The Polaris looks to include 5 manned turrets armed with dual size 4 weapons, an automated turret also with dual size 4 weapons and another remote turret armed with dual size 5 weapons. Judging by some of the concept work, the five manned turrets all look to be on the top deck of the Polaris, with one at the rear and the other four spread amidships for two port and two starboard. The central two turrets look like they may have coverage both above and below the ship. It looks like the other turrets are located below the nose and at the rear underside of the ship, and it seems likely that one of these is the remote turret and the other the automated turret. In addition, the specifications list two missile racks armed with two size 3 missiles with up to 16 missiles stored aboard for anti-fighter purposes. Finally, the Polaris also carries a relatively large hangar bay for a Gladius or Sabre sized fighter. This space takes up much of the body of the Polaris with the hangar doors at the top side of the ship. The specifications point to a minimum crew of 6 to a maximum crew of 14 persons aboard. The Q&A from the launch materials make clear that the Polaris will not be a solo ship and will require a crew of some sort. And even for a run and gun approach to drop torpedoes and then escape, that will be at least 2, one to pilot the ship and one to operate the torpedoes. And that's to sidestep the fact that the turrets are mostly manned turrets rather than remote, so it's likely that the Polaris would be a ship that's run by a small crew, at the very least, with probably 9 or 10 people required to fill all the different roles. As a corvette, the Polaris looks like an interesting ship to operate out in the stars and comes equipped with a variety of potentially useful rooms. There's a dedicated cargo bay with a cargo ramp and the Q&A for the Polaris notes that it can land and that the cargo hold is large enough for a rover. The specifications identify the storage as 216 SCU, although it's not clear if that's a fair reflection of anticipated capacity in the modern definition. The deck map for the main deck notes that there is an armoury, a medical bay and a couple of holding cells. Whilst smaller than some of the other capital ships, the Polaris class corvette is still a sizeable combat ship with a lot of potential use cases for players. The first and obvious possibility is as a combat platform, either in smaller engagements leaning into the relatively strong shields and armour to act as a deterrent to fighter sized craft as well as punish larger targets or in larger capital engagements as a potent threat with a torpedo armament. The ability to deploy a fighter from the hangar bay considerably improves the potential defensive characteristics of the Polaris too. It's worth adding that the quality of life features of the Polaris, things like the cargo bay and medical facilities, 
potentially make the Polaris an interesting choice for a group of players who want to operate away from home base for a period of time. Whilst the cargo bay doesn't seem to come close to that of similarly sized dedicated haulers, the Polaris is a comparatively well defended platform, so perhaps a use case for transporting high value or particularly volatile cargo could be a possibility. And through the combination of the onboard brig, coupled with the hangar to launch an interceptor, the Polaris could also offer some gameplay around a group bounty hunting scenario. In a fleet situation, the Polaris may have a couple of different uses, depending on the nature of the fleet and the potential threat. Starting with large fleet combat, the Polaris isn't as well defended as other capital ships, and so would need to be very careful in a protracted engagement to stay within the defensive envelope of friendly ships or employ hit and run tactics. The size 10 torpedoes likely carry significant damage potential to larger ships, and so in either situation the Polaris is likely to be a potent threat. Not so much in a 1 vs 1 situation where the torpedoes might be intercepted, but more for situations where the opponent is surprised and unprepared, or perhaps distracted by the chaos of battle, and in those situations, a torpedo hit could be incredibly impactful. And whilst that threat is potent, within the defensive envelope of a fleet, the Polaris could still do a reasonably good job of screening allied ships, using the manned turrets to sweep for enemy fighters and bombers, and deploying torpedoes from afar to add complexity to the battle for the enemy to deal with. But as can often happen with theory crafting and enjoying the possibilities of the future, this video might be on the verge of getting too long, so we'll just say that this just about covers for this episode of the Dry Dock. The series is still new, so your thoughts would be very welcome in the comments section, whether about the Polaris, whether you'd like to see more such videos in future, or if there's anything else you'd want included. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that too, as well as hitting the like button if you like heavily narrated slideshows talking about naval hardware. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.